In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicast. host the eater of worlds no it's not galactus it's me steven and sitting with me always i am your not host d rock world heavyweight champion yes master of a thousand moves a thousand and four a thousand and four yeah who's a, who's who's a thousand and four uh no, jericho yeah jericho you remember that yeah that's four more than we had the list yeah <laughs> he was reading all the holds that he does classic WWE moment. I love it because he's reading the list and they go to commercial and then they come back from commercial and he's still reading the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I think one of them is like toe hold or something. Like it's like it's not only the most consequential moves but the most inconsequential yeah, moves that like someone can do. It says like drop toe hold and then like spinning toe hold and like Fruity fruit toe hold or something. Yeah. It's like all these like holds that don't make don't don't exist. Uh, Jericho's awesome. the best. I'm a Jerichoholic. Man, he got kind of shitty. He got kind of shitty. He did. Like in the the last time we saw him was kind of. He was like. When was that? WrestleMania. He's the. It was um like last year after WrestleMania. He had that match with CM Punk at Payback, and he came back, and he's always such a shitty face to me. Like, he's think such so? a, yeah, he's like always, you know, making poopy jokes and, you know, mispronouncing people's names. I've always thought of him as being the guy that could play both sides of the fence equally well. I thought so, too, but then recently he's he was so bad as a face. I think it's just the audience. The audience is... No, but he was like... He was... I mean, he's like any any WWE face that's trying to appeal to, you know, 10-year-olds. It's like making poop jokes and, you know, dick slapping people and fucking... That's all you can do. All you do is slap a little dick on somebody. <laughs> that's the way to get it done. Slap a little dick on somebody? Like, here. Yeah. So, today we're going to do something uh, unique, never before done in the history of humanity. I don't know if we are. <laughs> as far as I know, nobody has done commentary for WWE Legends House yet on the WWE Network. As you can hear, that's yeah, the is. network thing, so you want to get past that network little PG whatever and pause it at the one second mark. One second, we got it at one second. And you should see... The, hor- the beautiful California horizon with the sun. Is that California? I assume it's California. Uh, yeah, I, was, I guess that's a good assumption. I th- yeah, We'll find out. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if I remember them saying anything about who, where they were. Maybe they're in Slam City. There you go. Okay, so we I mean they all have to find jobs now? Oh, no. Oh my god, that's the, that would be awesome. Cause that would like be on, on real world, they make them all like get a job somewhere. Yeah, so it's like a sub gonna... shop or like an ice cream store <laughs> yeah, or something. Like a smoothie place or some shit. So, but they would they would have such a horrible time pay, the handing out their resume to people. <laughs> There's no job that they can do efficiently. I, I don't think they're even gonna bother with that. <laughs> it would just be a, a total mess. The resume would be like tag team champion, <laughs> yeah. intercontinental champion. I'm an actor, sort of. Okay. Except for Roddy Piper, he's not an actor. Everyone, press play in three, two, one. Play. 
Trip down a little bit. Just a little bit. So immediately they start off with a montage promising us the Braveheart esque uh, fight scenes. Lots of sunglasses will be worn. <laughs> lots of drinking. Lots of eating. Hacksaw Jim Duggan has weird faces. Well, they have a. <laughs> they're gonna do a game show. Game show apparently. They're gonna jazzercise, I guess. That's something. They're gonna stare. And then they're gonna get yeah, perv on hot sex chicks. <laughs> sexually harass Ashley, the nice little uh, host chick. So the superstars on this show are Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson, Hillbilly Billy Jim, Jim uh, Roddy, 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 Piper, Roddy Piper, Jim, uh, Jimmy Hart, Jimmy Hart, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Mean Gene Overland, Tony Atlas, Tony Atlas, yeah. They're gonna be a There's Mean Gene's gonna, gonna break down and cry. As, uh, mean Gene crying. Is like the death of a thousand angels every time Mean Gene cries. Oh, and Howard Finkel. And Howard Finkel. Poor, out of shape Howard Finkel. Oh, man. Who, all these guys... I think that Howard Finkel's only on this show so that the guys look better by comparison to <laughs> Howard Finkel. Because yeah. everyone has aged better Howard, than Howard Finkel. Howard Finkel has put on a little bit of weight. You can't really tell at the beginning when they introduce him, but when they get into playing tennis, <laughs> you'll see... You know what would have been an alternate title for this show? Whoa. Cockfest. Cockfest. It is total cockfest. Except for Ashley. Ashley. Ashley, our host. Poor Ashley. So what do we know about the Legends House? Apparently this was shot many years ago. Was it? That's what George told me. That this was shot like two years ago. And this has been on the shelf. Waiting to be shown off. That's interesting. So they like make outdated cultural references and stuff? Well, they probably do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably stuck saying snap into a Slim Jim. Yeah, right. Tony Atlas is the first to show up at this house. One of my favorite things about this show is Tony Atlas's laugh being on television. His eyes, too. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Some of his visual... That's one thing about, like, a lot of wrestlers, too. Like, they have perfect faces and facial expressions. They kind of, like, harvest that out of people. They, like, find a guy that can make a really crazy face, like Bray Wyatt. And the type of face that reads to, like, a crowd of thousands in an arena. I love the (laughs) the little baseboard things that they have behind the... All have Man's pictures of pictures. them in their prime. That's little like theme headboards. It's really cool. I wish my bed had a picture of me posing over it. I know, right? And for some reason, there's a a, a giant uh, tag team championship. The modern Penny uh, Bronze ta- tag team championship is hanging up in the house, even though that's like. 30 years ahead of anybody's time who's on this. A hillbilly Jim's being introduced now. He's the type of wrestler that I remember from my youth, but only in a very auxiliary fashion. Yeah, like a blur, yeah. Like he was, in my eyes, a total jobber city. Yeah. A team player. I mean, I think he was. I think the. the he was in a tag team called the Hillbillies before he was just Hillbilly Jim. That I think was like I don't know if this Hillbilly not, concept not entirely. Jobber. I don't know if this Hillbilly concept will stand alone. Let's try it as a tag yeah, team first. Go. See if two guys can carry it before we just have the one guy carry it. Tony Atlas is eating already. That, that will yeah. will not be the last time that you see Tony Atlas eating. It would be awesome if by the end of this. Tony Atlas looks just like Howard Finkel. <laughs> <laughs> and Howard Finkel looks like Tony, Tony Atlas. Atlas. <laughs> they had a total body swap. The seven days of exercise apparently, that they got. Yeah, apparently Jimmy Hart was saying that he he's going to get Howard Finkel in shape. So. And if anyone can do it, it's the mouth of the South. <laughs> Hillbilly Jim's ready for a hootenanny. 
Yeah, that's like the best line in the whole episode. <laughs> have a hoot nanny. That should have been another possible title for the show. Wrestling Hoot Nanny. <laughs> Legends Hoot Nanny. That's another thing too. The way this is edited together is so great. Yeah. Every, every time, every time they like mention somebody, it goes right into like introducing that person. Yeah. What do you know about Pat Patterson? I don't think I've ever seen Pat Patterson All I actually know about wrestle. Pat Patterson is that he speaks like a person who has been hit in the head way too many times. <laughs> I've done just about everything in the business. I remember him more from being a part of Vince McMahon's crew. Yeah, the Stooges. That's that, the that's, Stooges. That's the sad thing that like everybody only remembers Pat Patterson and Briscoe from the Stooges, but like Pat Patterson was the first Intercontinental Champion. And apparently, he made up the Royal Rumble. I didn't even know that. That's pretty badass accomplishment. That's a yeah. And that's that's For right sure. up there with like E equals M C squared. Although the original Royal Rumble wasn't. Um, it wasn't, like, for a shot at the title. I think, actually, the first Royal Rumble was just, like... But it had the format, no? Yeah, yeah. Of, like, introducing a wrestler but one was, at a time. Yeah, but it was yeah. just, like, the winner, you know, it was like King of the Ring. You just he, won. You were the Royal Rumble winner. Yeah. <laughs> he cracked the formula. Like, Albert Einstein had E equals MC squared. <laughs> Pat Patterson was, like, everyone comes to the ring every three minutes. And they have a bunch of matches, and then you go over the top ropes. Is it three minutes or two minutes? Semantics. Yeah. Jimmy Hart's the getting in. The mouth of the South is mouthing off right now. I saw him at a at the first comic book convention I ever went to, which was FXCon. Oh, yeah? In, like, 2005, he was there. And he was just, like, macking it to, like, these two blonde <laughs> 40-year-old women, like, trying his best. He seems, Rocking a mullet. He seems like one of those guys that's like not a wrestling character. Like he's just the person that he is. Yeah. Just like turned up to 11 basically. I wouldn't be surprised if when he pulls out his penis, it looks exactly like him with a mullet and sunglasses <laughs> and a mustache. And then he just takes a piss. That's how in character he is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And he's the ultimate, the ultimate entertainer. entertainer. <laughs> because when I think entertainment, I don't think of William Shakespeare <laughs> or Tolstoy or any of the greats. I love comb over Howard Finkel, too. That's such a great yeah. Howard Finkel. Ball Howard Finkel always was like, uh, when he shaved his head, I was like, come on, dude, just be bald. Be a bald guy. He looks like he's trying to impersonate Goldberg. I think unsuccessfully. He, I think he's also like the only guy in this house probably that's not like uber alpha male personality. Oh yeah. He's like a fairly n- normal like sometimes kind of a sensitive person. Yeah, you can just see like a little bit of glass in his eyes. He yeah. meets everybody. Like he's, he's here to reminisce. He's not here like to like anyone steal else the show. in this house. I think I feel like if you hung out with him long enough, you would want to die. But Howard Finkel would probably be cool to hang out. Maybe Mean Gene. Mean Gene seems like he's somewhat. Maybe it's just because we saw him crying, but he seems, <laughs> he seems like somewhat of a person. Also, he seems like a giant teddy bear. Yeah. I just want to have Mean Gene on on my so does bed Finkel too. Howard next Finkel. to a bunch of fluffy elephants. Howard Finkel is a total teddy bear, too. At least now. (laughs) Hacksaw Jim Duggan is a grizzly bear. Yeah. He's, like, one of the earliest wrestlers that I can remember, like, realizing, like, wow, this guy has a gimmick, and it's awesome, and everyone's really into it. Yeah. You can't go wrong with USA. That's your gimmick. Especially in the 80s. I mean, that was, you know, patriotism was... It's so funny, too, uh, watching, like, old episodes of Raw, and they're talking, like... They're they're trying to put over this idea that people think that patriotism is dead or whatever. Uh, and then, no, we're, we're patriotic, we're gonna revive patriotism or whatever. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Save patriotism. Yeah. And this is in, like, 93, like, in the middle of, like, the Gulf War, I think. 
I love that they everyone's like waiting in anticipation of Rowdy Roddy Piper. There's been like a couple Roddy Piper teases, and everyone's just dreading he's his obviously, arrival. He's obviously the most volatile personality that's on the show. It's gotta be. Mean Gene, mean Gene Okerlund's getting his intro. I've talked with the biggest and the best. Why is it? And a picture of him uh, with him and Liberace. In the montage, for some reason, they show him with Dennis Rodman as a highlight of his career somehow. Dennis oh, Rodman Chuck and Liberace were the and, highlights of his and career. And Chuck Norris, apparently. Of course, Chuck Norris. Of course. You gotta be kidding me. I'm trying to think of a Chuck Norris joke that would involve Mean Gene Okerlund. <laughs> and I'm failing. <laughs> And just the way Mean Gene pats them on their faces like a loving grandfather. Yeah, he's totally the grandfather of the group. Uh, I could just see him in the 80s being like, want me to rub down your back while you need help with that? Leave me alone. Part of the charm of this show, which is amazing that a reality show has charm, yeah. is that like a normal reality show like The Surreal Life they leave the assigning of beds to, like, randomness so that people can have a fight about it. Yeah. Here, they just ass- they know that the egos are too big. Oh, we just got we So just they got just assigned first, people's beds. I think we just got our first Tony Atlas belly laugh. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Hacksaw Jim Duggan has the best facial expressions. Yeah, he does. He <laughs> is a human cartoon character he totally when he's is. not in the ring. It's amazing. And Roddy's being Roddy, introduced. Roddy Piper's racist greatest hits. <laughs> right there. The less said about that, the better. Yeah. <laughs> because we want to like Roddy Piper. He came here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and he's all out of bubblegum. And he's, yeah. And only full with racial epithets. He's definitely like the dark one. He's the guy that's gonna like cause all the trouble. He's coming in like all these guys are like the Justice League and they're all happy and super friends. <laughs> and he's coming in like I'm fucking Batman in this bitch. You gotta do this my way. I don't way. even wanna be here. You all should worship me. He should have come in the kilt. Just to scare them. Because I feel like if any of them showed up in their wrestling this. gear, it would be on. I love this line. He's like, I'm not here to learn anything. I'm here to teach. I, uh, uh. I think he's just like so pompous and narcissistic. It's hilarious. But it gets less hilarious. But he's not being a character is what's amazing. He's no, yeah, just he's being just himself, himself yeah. is he's what a, it seems like. He's another one of those guys that's just like himself turned up to 11. And then like... Broke the volume knob off and could have turned it back down to the five. <laughs> and the loving way Mean Gene Okerlund is like, Hot Rod here. <laughs> He's just such a grandpa. I have history with each one of these guys for like 20, 30 years. So this show was 30 years, 20, 30 years in the making? Apparently, yeah. I'm the outcast of the bunch. Supposedly, like, a lot of the guys. Um, they want. I guess they wanted to put people together that like didn't have that much of a relationship when they were in the business, because a lot of them were like, "I never really got to know this person that well," and blah blah blah. So that should be interesting. Because I'm sure that the cool part is they're both gonna have stories about the same people, but they'll be different stories. You know what I mean? Like tangentially, we just want to hear them say. <laughs> Tony Hulk Adams Hogan back. stories about how what a D bag Hulk Hogan was, yeah, right. <laughs> or how Macho Man Randy Savage. No, all that gets edited out <laughs> by Vince McMahon. You think there's just like a cutting room floor of just shit talking? I love the I, I love how many like how everybody's like basically trying to like out not gay each other. <laughs> like I'm the not gayest of all. And then I love. Uh, Piper's like when when they're interviewing him beforehand, and he's like, "I'm not. I love Hacksaw. I'm not gonna room with him." And then they cut right to their beds <laughs> beds in the same room. <laughs> Ugh. 
He's already, like, he just got there, and he's already, like, being tested. Fuck. <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? I want to leave already. I think that he's the only one with a rational mindset into going into a house with these seven individuals. House like, seven. all these people are so neurotic, probably, from their 50 years of existence in the strangest profession on earth. Yeah, oh, here we go. Here comes the, the uh, sex appeal. The yeah, uh, and she's oh, pretty hot. I gotta yeah, tell you, she is super hot. She's pretty hot. But they they put her in a house. Well, not really in a house, but they like put her in front of. Hello. Like. Hello, what is it? Eight of them, I guess. Eight Hello, of these seven. fucking. Seventies. Old school. Of course I would. <laughs> of course I would. Thank you. Well, I've always been a big fan. Mean Gene's always been a big fan of beautiful ladies. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I wonder if she knew when she walked in, like, this conversation is immediately going to start with people ogling me. Yeah, right. The creepiest, most sexist old man just ogling and fucking... <laughs> Look at the creepy smiles on their faces. It's so great. A part of me wishes that they didn't do these like reality show yeah, here are your right. challenges just stuff. Just let them hang out and play golf. Let them have a yeah. good time and just, just hear the stories. Although I do love the uh, going to meet the neighbors. That's a great. But no thing. one. The, the cool part you could get out of meeting the neighbors is if one of the neighbors actually like recognize them and like marked out no, on them. No, it's, it's way more interesting when they don't. I no, think. it's just awkward. It's just hilarious though. It's just like it's just a regular these interaction. Giant wrestler people and they're like being invited in for tea and stuff. It's so hilarious. I love it. But then it just becomes a regular boring interaction. Like anyone can have an awkward interaction. But to get to have a fan interaction, like I'm sure they recognize Jimmy Hart. Wrestlers have a special kind of awkward interaction with people because <laughs> they, they're like they're so full of charisma, and all, but also like totally detached from the world that these people live in. I love it's, Howard Finkel knows Spanish. Look at this. This is great. And he's like deliciously fluent in Spanish. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> And the, the cleaning lady just fucking turns them away. Or maybe she's not the cleaning lady. That's kind of racist, I guess. <laughs> Jimmy, sure, Hart's, someone, someone Jimmy has, Hart's gonna be like, who's the racist sexist now? <laughs> mean Gene Okerlund. This old, super this, recognizable. This middle-aged rich guy is just like the nicest guy ever. He gives them brownies. And Tony Atlas doesn't want to stop eating the brownies. And he thinks that they're the best brownies ever. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not just being nice. No. <laughs> he believes it. Yeah. That would be the worst. If the one time you have the best brownies ever, it's just some random occurrence and you can never replicate See, I think, it. I, th I feel like this is set up. Like, I don't feel like any, anybody ever just answers the door with, like, their child and their dog. At the no. <laughs> when you know, if you have a child and a dog, they run to the door as soon as the alarm is you think? sounded. And I love that. And the little kid is like, I want to see you wrestle that guy. <laughs> he does a fake wrestling move. And Hacksaw wants none of it. Hacksaw's like, I'm not here to kid, wrestle. He gets immediately scared. It's the best part. I guess there's going to be a lot of calling each other ugly on this show. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of insulting each other. Because they just had Pat I'm Patterson. Than you and, yeah. Call Howard Finkel ugly. And now Duggan's ugly. And probably call each other fat all the time. And... I think I remember a joke that Pat Patterson made at one point about somebody that likes to play with meat, apparently. What? Because he's the, yeah, because he's like the meat guy at the grocery oh, store. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. All the most homophobic jokes and sexist jokes and racist jokes. That's what you say on the road. That's what you do when you're. I love on this the road. where where 
the kid hands Roddy Piper a dog treat and he tastes it and then he blames the child. <laughs> <laughs> So Roddy Piper kicked out of the house reading dog treats. Dug in laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> Roddy Piper, I love any time that someone makes a joke and he thinks it's funny, but it's a joke on him. He always is like, not funny. Not even funny. Come on in, you have a camera crew. It's safe, I guess. Yeah, right. I was wondering about that because he said that there's some of the guys from the first one. I was wondering, is everyone in this house was everyone in this house involved in the first WrestleMania? I feel like they were. Like, I know a bunch of them were for sure. Uh, mean Gene, of course, and Jimmy Hart. And, I don't know about like Hillbilly Jim. Seems like he would have been, and Tony Atlas. The footage that they used looked like WrestleMania One. Yeah, but I mean like every one of the guys. You know? If only there was a podcast we could listen to that had the facts. Yeah. Fuck that. Fuck Here's facts. Tony. Tony's chowing down on some. some... Oh no, they haven't gotten the brownies yet. Oh yeah, they have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be like, excuse me, Mr. White Man, could you adopt me, please? <laughs> <laughs> Just make me brownies every day. Yeah, we did. I'll subsist. I'll, I'll do chores around the house. I'll fold your clothes with my giant arms. 22 <laughs> inches. <laughs> oh my god, Jim Duggan, no. <laughs> they should not give you guys a dog or a cat. For a, se- a seven day dog I think the show takes place over the course of like seven days Really the whole or thing? Or like two weeks probably It doesn't take more than that oh to God, shoot one go, of these shows go. The epic battle <laughs> Piper versus Blender <laughs> They should have devoted the entire episode To this <laughs> To this To Piper versus the Blender This should have been an episode onto itself Right this, should, this is an epic feud. Not just a segment. This should be WrestleMania 31. The main <laughs> event should be Piper vs. Blender. <laughs> They're so old that they don't understand blenders without switches. So this is... They've had a night in the house now. Yeah. Because they look like they all just woke up. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. It's weird too to see the clothes that fifty-year-old guys wear know, yeah, right? when they're just hanging out around the house. It's like you—you you would expect them to be wearing tights all the time, no? It's like yeah. <laughs> why are they wearing people clothes? Tights are so comfortable. What are you they're doing? Not, they're not people. <laughs> I wonder if the people who are putting the. Appliances on the show purposefully got them difficult appliances. The, the, that's that's what's so hilarious about this because whoever's working the camera, you know that they're just standing there and they know how to fucking work the thing, and they're just standing there like trying so hard not to laugh. Put the knife down, oh my god, he's gonna stab somebody because he can't figure <laughs> out the blender. I love how far Jim Duggan is standing away from him. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Because he knows how volatile Piper is. Especially when he's brandishing a knife. Persistence pays off. The first lesson of this show. The real payoff is coming up. I love, I love that the end of this segment is my favorite part. <laughs> Just fuck, fuck you to the blender. You, fuck you, blender. Even if the cameras weren't on, he would say the exact same and thing. I'm sure he would. That's the best part. Cause like when you live your life with cameras on you, like this, like on a reality show, I'm sure at some point, eventually, you start to tune them out, and you just like live your life. Yeah. 
I imagine. I don't to know. Us. Maybe I've never lived with a camera in my face, so I wouldn't really know. Oh, they get golf carts. I want a golf cart. I think they're in like Palm Springs or something. Yeah. Oh, of course. They're in some like retirement community, of course. Where you can golf cart your way just, yeah. to the grocery store. Palm, Palm Springs. Springs. There you go. Whoa, psychic. <laughs> and I've seen this before. So they're making like an they're, they're old make, timey yeah, dish. They're, uh, they're making cabbage rolls. They like to play with which sounds See, like here it is. They like to play with meat. Yeah. And this guy is <laughs> totally unamused. Yeah. At this joke at his expense. Yeah. Well, it's like a fucking twenty-year-old joke. Yeah. And Pat Patterson thinks he's so clever. He's like, I bet you this meat guy never heard this one before. <laughs> It's like a joke that like a twelve year old would tell. Yeah. Or a sixty year old, I guess. Oh, Pat Patterson's probably like eighty, I guess. He's old. He looks old. Fucking Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart stealing a cart that's for a person that's disabled. And he thinks it's awesome. And he thinks it's awesome. This is As awesome. If, he's, he's probably thinking, like, why doesn't everybody use one of these? These are great. Jimmy Hart just loves props, no matter what they are. <laughs> be it a megaphone or a chair or a stick. That makes me sad that Jim Cornette's not on this. He can just brandish his tennis racket all the time. <laughs> I want to see Jim Cornette living his life just constantly clutching this tennis racket. Like going to the... Oh, speaking of which... <laughs> tennis. Tennis time. Because every WWE superstar plays a little tennis. Oh my god, look at <laughs> Cabbage roll's the most so Irish Saint food Patrick's I guess Day, you can have. So, well, I mean, or maybe it's like February or something. Or March. Oh, when they're shooting this? Maybe. No, I imagine they're just very far from March. He's being very, very clever. I guess they, I mean, cabbage. Cabbage is pretty Irish. Yeah. Oh my god. Howard Finkel. I hear this, but Howard Finkel's kind of gained a little bit of weight. Yeah. We're going to give him a little exercise because I'm going to him to be slim. Because Howard Finkel never thought of exercising yeah. before Jimmy Hart. The Jimmy Thank Hart you for your, program. Thank you for your wisdom. This <laughs> little scamper. I love that they're smoking cigars and like drinking water know, right? and having and the best watching, time ever. Watching these other guys exercise. Well, there's no. <laughs> Tony Hadlis. They can't have TVs for them to watch or books for them to read. Yeah. Well, you just gotta stare at each other. Yeah, they wouldn't anyway. That might, that kind of makes me want a cigar now. This is so hard to do with. No Whoa, time. Derek, classy guy, wants a cigar. Watch out. I actually have some cigars, but they're super dry by now. They want. They They're like probably years old now, and they've just been sitting in my drawer. His humid drawer. Yeah. Well, not even. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> this is what wrestling guys do They stretch each other out Well yeah he's been standing in the kitchen all day And he's like a hundred years old So they have, These guys have like no Sense of time or planning They're like yeah I'll make cabbage rolls They only take like 12 hours to make I would not sit there and starve I know, right? Yeah, I would have ordered would a pizza long before yeah. this. <laughs> I hope that this is just reality show. Yeah, like like suspense. editing, making it look like they've been waiting for hours for these roles yeah, when it's been like an hour and a half. At some point, someone on the camera crew has got to be like, "You guys want to like order some Chinese or something?" No, he's gonna let them starve. <laughs> yeah, they have to. Yeah, I guess they. <laughs> <laughs> Piper makes fucking. <laughs> Peanut butter on an English muffin, apparently. Is that the only food they have in the house? Why wouldn't they just, like, order something? Plus, they live in a fucking, like, retirement community. There's gotta be some way... Everything's probably closed by now. There? Yeah. You think? So, apparently, they never eat. I guess, yeah. <laughs> they, never, they never eat anything. 
Apparently they, they never eat anything and they smoke cigarettes. Well, they, like, and they went to the grocery store to get all that stuff for the cabbage rolls, but I guess that's all they got. Because <laughs> what the fuck? They got all that ground beef. See the dong show. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think that they couldn't decide if this show is supposed to be 30 minutes or an hour. Because this should be a whole other episode now. But they yeah. just stuck this in. You won't believe who's here. Come here. I guess. How, 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 how much time has passed so far? It's 30 minutes on the, on the, on the button right now. So. There's really no reason for them to make it 43 minutes either. It's not like they have commercial commercial constraints, so they can do however long they want. But I was glad that they included this because this is awesome. Gary Busey with other senile people is always Gary Busey's a staple of every reality show. Yeah. To offer his sage-like wisdom. He's the closest thing that we have to... A Buddha? No. Uh, to, like, Gandalf the Grey in oh, real okay. life. Like, he's the only... He, like, every, he walks around everywhere saying stuff, and your mom's like, he's crazy. <laughs> but you're like, I love Gary Busey. What are you talking about? He's wacky. So if he's Gandalf, that makes Howard Finkel Frodo... I just love the fact that, like, he's so obviously, like, bullshitting the hell out of them, but, like, some of, and they're, they're all taking it super seriously, like, some of them are like, this is bullshit, and others are like, I was really into what he was saying, and then, like, Tony Atlas is, like, yeah, super love into it. Mean Gene's biggest gripe is that he doesn't like the yoga position. <laughs> yeah, he can't get his he can't get his legs in his side because he's so short and wide and like his body doesn't do that. He's just miserable. <laughs> he can't even cross my legs. No point in doing this. Close your eyes. <laughs> Piper. How many times? Piper just anytime That's anything twice. he doesn't understand is just fuck, fuck you. you. <laughs> I wonder what his reaction to an inconvenient truth was. Was he just like, fuck you. <laughs> they should have like a Piper review blog and it just turns everything into fuck you. <laughs> this, is a review. this is a review for the Big Lebowski. Bunch of guys are trying to get money for the thing. Fuck you. <laughs> Batman, this guy's trying to get the Joker. Fuck you. <laughs> Naughty Sluts 5, this is actually a fuck you. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. More food. Yeah, more food, of course. More guys sitting around and eating. Gary just, Busey talking jive. Gary Busey's got a thing on his mouth, you saw that? He's got, like, some food on his, on his face. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Atlas is like engulfed in fucking Gary Busey's wisdom. F A I T H stands for. Pat Patterson can't stand him. Pat Patterson's gonna strangle him. Interesting. I'm not buying that. What do you guys do for recreation now? Play tennis. What do we do for recreation now? Golf. Sit in the sun. Sit in the sun. Sit in the sun. That's recreation. That's more than I do. <laughs> so basically, a plant is involved in recreation all the time. <laughs> Look at that recreative plant outside. Oh, here we go. We get our first uh, reality show fight. He was so intent on talking to Gary about something, and I disagreed with some of that stuff. Which is stupid. Family, uh, Hacksaw jumping in and disagrees, disagrees about doing charity work. About doing charity work. It makes you look like such a dick, Hacksaw. Yeah. To bust in on this guy when he's talking about his own charity work. <clears throat> and just be like, I rebut that one statement you made about families. Yeah. It's just egos. This is gonna be like the most ego clashing show. I can't wait. And they're just gonna clash over nothing like they did here. I can't wait. 
Tony Atlas looks like a modern day uh, Indiana Jones with his black hat. <laughs> Someone should Photoshop Tony Atlas in the Temple of Doom or something. Roddy Piper is like, charity, fuck you. <laughs> Tony Atlas is so fucking, he's so such foresight. He knows where someone's going with something long before they get there. I hope they have an episode where they get to, like, meet some young wrestling up-and-comers and, like, and shit all deliver over. with some. <laughs> Why are you talking? You guys have had close-ups for years and years and know. years. <laughs> He's trying to make a point about something. Maybe even counseling of spirituality would come in to take the magnificent part you're playing in the ring. So when you get out and take off your... Okay, this is an interesting thing they talk about here, though. The fact that actors are just actors, but wrestlers are always themselves. Their, their characters. They're always their character. They're always, people always come up to them and call them, you know. Actors get to live in the skin <coughs> for, like, a little bit of time. Yeah. People, but people come up to Gary Busey and they're like, Whoa, Gary Busey! But people come up to Roddy Piper like, oh my god, Roddy Piper! And when they say, you're my hero, they mean, you're my yeah. hero, not that character yeah, that exactly. was in that movie once. I would love to see Roddy Piper versus Gary Busey oh, man. in that would WrestleMania. That would be, be pretty awesome. Good matchup. Who would you like to see? Why is Gary Busey's eyes are like on two different levels? Yeah, he has like kind of like the the sloth from Goonies thing yeah, going on yeah, with his face. He does. Yeah, too many car, too many motorcycle accidents. I guess. Yeah. Don't make your face work out well. <laughs> what would be the dream casting for Legends House Two? You oh, could have wow. anybody in Legends House. Oh, man. Uh, obviously, you want... Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan in there. You obviously want to see, see him bed next to Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Since this is like, you know... It's, it's hard, though, because list. all the guys that I would want to put in it are no longer with us, I feel like. Oh, you'd want to do the dead Legends House? Warrior, fucking... Just them. <laughs> just, two of, just two of them in the house is an odd couple. It would be great. Savage and Warrior get their own house. Um, who else? Who else would be good? Um, I'd like to see. Uh, you know, you want to see Andre the Giant. You want to see people living with Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant would be good. He would be like the the house like. I don't know the 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 kind of like the 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 bedrock that everybody like he always like calms everybody down and he's big so he can beat anybody up if they get out of hand or like pull people off of each other. I want to see like Bob Backlund. Oh, Bob Backlund! Yes, he'd be hilarious. Yes, perfect choice. Uh, be Bob Backlund. Paul Heyman might be good. I imagine. Paul Heyman would be good, but he's not really that... He's not a personality so much. Like, he is, but he's not, like... Like, He's not really legend status, I don't think. I would love to see, like, Jim Cornette. Um, Let's do Mr. Fuji. Mr. Fuji would be pretty hilarious. (laughs) Ron Wilson probably has some good stories for Legends House. Ron Wilson? Yeah. Who's that? Damn. Oh, Ron Simmons. Ron Simmons, sorry. What the hell's wrong with me? Uh, oh, now they're comparing surgery scars. This is excellent. Bunch of, this is what old people do. They talk about their ailments and injuries. Believe me, I've been there. I'm surprised there's not like a medication time in the morning so they can all... <laughs> Take their medication together. All right. How many? How many like m- Sunday through Saturday pill boxes do you think are in this house? <laughs> the hard part is 
You want to see yeah. Dusty Rhodes in the house? Dusty Rhodes for sure. Yeah. Dusty yeah. Rhodes would be great. Um, <clears throat> let's get some women in the house this time. Yes. It's a little. Is May Young? May Young's gone. Yeah, she's gone. Yeah, she's gone. She just. She's she got to be in the dead's house. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we should. That would be awesome. Legends House in the Sky. That'd be awesome. Legends House in the Sky. Shots of their beautiful house. Time to do some drinking. Time to drink. Let Jane do the job for you. This is great because we get like our uh, Roddy Piper starts fucking freaking out already. It's five o'clock someplace. That's I always movies. point that out for the record. It's only whenever people say that, it's like it's only five o'clock somewhere when it's on the hour. You know, if it's four thirty right now, it's not five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> it's not five o'clock anywhere. <laughs> Piper is already brooding and like can't take any more of this on the first day. I guess it's like the second day, right? He's probably not gonna make it. Someone He's always gonna... leaves a reality show <clears throat> prematurely. <clears throat> yeah. Whether it be for some extenuating circumstances because they're going nuts. He's just yeah. He's... Someone always walks out on a reality show. He's it's the first episode and he's already like ready to crack. He's wandering out the front door. Into in the, the middle, night. In the middle of the night, just to <laughs> walk. I wish I had the balls of Roddy it's Piper Tony, Tony Atlas to do that, to just walk out into the night. Well, aimlessly. they're also in Palm Springs. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> I don't think much is going to happen to us. Oh, I guess that's part of it, too, that everyone starts drinking and he does, he's does. he been clean for however many years. Yeah. And they play the ominous chords in the yeah, background, no, yeah. so you realize he's talking about the dark times now. The dark times. He's talking to himself, like any good crazy. Person. I would love to see a rowdy Roddy Piper, like biopic, like the yeah. way they did, like walk, uh, walk the line and stuff. Yeah. You know, be, I'd love to see a young actor that'd be really portray him. <laughs> Thank you, for Jimmy Hart, for pointing out that they didn't lock you into this house. <laughs> With nothing but cabbage rolls. <laughs> it's funny, too, because when we were with Gary Busey, they had this really big, nice meal that obviously the... the WWE per, must have provided. They, they couldn't do yeah, that the night before. <laughs> when they were fucking scrounging for English muffins and peanut butter. This camera guy must be so pissed at Roddy Piper. I know, right? He's like, he must oh. be like, I was all set up to be inside <laughs> yeah, all night. I was, gonna, I I was ready to nowhere. go to bed and this asshole just decides to wander out in the middle of the night. I just think this could be up to a major, major disaster. I'm telling you right now, buddy. Roddy. They're all so wise too. Like I think this could build up to something bad. <laughs> He's wandering out in the middle of the night. It's just a matter of time. He's so Batman. And Roddy He's Piper fucking, is Batman. He's totally. He's howling at the moon. What a perfect way to end Legends House. With Roddy Piper howling at the moon. On the next Legends House, Roddy Piper turns into a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the end of Legends House. You just sat through Legends House commentary. There were some lulls, but we made it. We did it. We did to it the we end. did pretty good. That was about how much talking there is in a normal commentary, so I think we did a did a pretty good little commentary. There. An amicable job. Yeah. Uh you can find all our work at vundablog.com. You can tweet us at vundablog. And at Gabby's Perv Mind and at Bioponic B I O P O N I C. Uh, we hope you are doing well on this most glorious of days. <laughs> May the wrestling legend smile upon you and good fortune follow. I don't know why I'm feeling so like. <laughs> 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 I'm your host, Steven. I am your world heavyweight champion, D-Rock. 
And remember, kids, this was Fake Fighting Frenzy. Hey, Wonder. Hey, Wonder. Wondercast? Give yeah. it up for Wondercast, man. What an adorable name. You're listening to the Wundercast. What's up, everybody? This is Jason David Frank, Green Ranger. You're listening to Wundercast. We got it. Subscribe to the Vondacast.